everything seems to be going to the TSA these days, and, and left or right, it doesn't seem to matter. Many of us are very concerned about the civil liberties issues, about the security theater issues, and frankly, about the invasions of privacy issues. Uh, Representative State Representative Sharon Sisna, the, who, rep, who represents, ably represents the 22nd District of Alaska, uh, akdemocrats.org slash rep underscore Cisna, C-I-S-S-N-A. The website is on the line with us. And Representative Cisna, welcome to our program. Thank you so much. And and thanks for joining us. And and uh, this is a, a, an auspicious week, by the way. We just, just went on the air live in uh, Anchorage, Wasilla. Uh, is it called the Ken- Kenai Peninsula? Uh, Kenai. Kenai. Yeah. Thank you. Now I can say it right. Uh, sold Dotna and Eagle and Eagle River. Anyway, uh, so uh, tell us what happened. You you what you came back to Alaska after a two day cruise, basically that you took or or ferry trip as a result of refusing to take an, an airplane flight to a to to a celebration to basically a, a welcoming committee. What did you do that that produced that? What happened? Uh, well, it was really a very personal thing because that's exactly what these things are. And they may be very public in terms of what people can see, but they're very private in terms of what we're up against when we, when we fly. We, uh, we all, going through those screening processes, are right up against something that is a kind of closed off in terms of what freedoms you have and and obviously in terms of how it's being uh, administered mm-hmm. how what is a, a federal policy which is based on safety and every one of us want that every one of us want privacy every one of us wants um, to know that we're not going to be harmed ourselves and that's what TSA is working on um, and I I agree with the basic goal there how it's being administered however is without regard to the the human dignity mm-hmm. without really regard to uh, my safety as a person, they're not really looking at that. They're looking for ways to really intimidate me is what it feels like. In other words, they're and, not they're not considering the fact that there are people who are sexual violence survivors, people who are cancer survivors who, uh, well, actually, if you, if you don't mind telling your story. Well, what, it, what happened to your dignity? Common citizens, uh, mm-hmm. you know, just your everyday, uh, really lawful, abiding person doesn't really get a chance here, yeah. and that's not what is, is really being looked at. Is are you a good law-abiding person? There's ways to figure that one out without uh, feeling people up, right. and that's what I faced. Yeah. And I went um, actually three months ago was when it really happened to me, where I got that truly invasive, and it was very invasive. If they say not, um, if I had filmed it, you could have seen it. And they don't allow filming, I doubt, of that kind of thing. But I went through the full body scan and then was told, because I have one breast, I'm one of those people, and I have the prosthesis, and in that process, I am abnormal if you're looking at me through a scan. Right. Because so, you had breast cancer. Because I had breast cancer, yeah. and believe me, that wasn't a choice that I made willingly. Right. right? <laughs> so, uh, the fact that I didn't get to have a choice in terms of uh, having some kind of other way to have them know for sure that I'm safe, I cannot believe we can't do this. And I don't believe we need to poison people through dangerous um, x-ray processes that really haven't had a chance to be studied. Yes. That's, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at policy that's being thrown together is what it almost feels like. We don't have very careful oversight, and I'm seeing that in the, the journeys I've been on in, in my own state, looking at the state of, of uh, Alaska and making 
making sure that we've got good oversight, that's making sure that our money is spent well, that we're doing things high quality, because that's what government has to be. Mm-hmm. We have to be high quality. And um, and I see that certainly in this screening. It, it really leads the list in a lot of ways, because we deal with an amazing number of people who fly, who are really going through the most intimidating, the most intimidating part of this. So that's what happened to me is that the second time it happened, my husband and I agreed that I could say no. Mm -hmm. And I said no. Hmm. And I, I actually had had been under the impression that Seattle had taken that full body scan out. I, I somebody had told me that, or it's been real busy this year. So no, Michael Chertoff has been where. really aggressive in his lobby, and they're actually buying brand new ones for the Chertoff porno scanners. They're all over the country now. Good heavens. Yep, yeah, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's the absolute wrong thing for us to do, and I believe in government. I am a huge fan of government, or at least the possibilities of what government can be when we, the people, make sure that it does the job right. right. So you said no, and what happened? And uh, and actually, um, yeah, uh, I said no before the woman got the sentence out, because I... I hadn't realized that it was there. I was in a hurry and was looking forward to getting home after my own uh, other medical issues that I had taken care of in Seattle. And that's what we do in Alaska. We go down to Seattle for really the intensive things that right. Alaska can't handle yet. And um, and I was thrilled about that and going through and just had really, uh, and I think some of it was an emotional uh, blackout that I had done of the previous experience, and then saw her in front of me and and was there. And she started talking, and I said no. And she, she said, I, I need to tell you about what we're going to do. And I said, no, you're not going to do it. I'm not going to fly. I, you need to call the people you're going to call because I know that that's part of the process, but I'm not going to be taking the plane because I'm not going to be searched. And she tried to talk me into it, and then there was a group of big men around me, and um, I just kept telling them, nope, not going, I'm leaving, because I will not be scanned. And it was really kind of an empowering thing in a lot of ways. I felt, I felt sort of, after I'd done it, I felt um, kind of empowered in a lot of ways. You stood up to the man. <laughs> well, yeah, it was so big. We're, we're talking <laughs> with State Representative Sharon Sisna. <laughs> Rep- Representative Sisna, we just uh, of Alaska. We just have a minute left before we have to take a break and and uh, and wrap this up. What's the message? What's the carry? And and then you took a ferry home and and came home as a, to a hero's welcome or a heroine's welcome. What is the carry home message for our viewers and listeners? The thing that we need to do is get together. We need to to look out for each other, and that's that's what sometimes is missing, is that we're not realizing we're all part of this. Mm. We're all being affected by this. We must solve the problem. In the state legislature, there's a huge energy right now, and they're all excited because actually I was speaking for my people. I really didn't think that at the time, but I've come home to this confirmation of how important this is to our state. We travel more than most states do Mm. because we're so far away from everything. And it's absolutely imperative to our people. It's absolutely imperative to the United States that we do our government processes right. Yeah. Amen. And uh, and enough already of the Chertoff porno scanners and groin gropes. Uh, Sharon, (laughs) State Representative Sharon Sista, a hero or heroine, as the case may be, from Alaska, the 22nd District. Thanks so much for being on our program today. 